Yo, yo. So we're we're playing a game as you hopped in, uh, Justin. Really quick, do you have a phobia before we get started? Do you have a phobia? Phobia? No, I don't think so. Anyway, <laughs> I, I totally do. I'll explain it in a second. But ladies and gentlemen, Justin Miller, also the singer of Ice and Dubs in the building. Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> Woo! Yeah. yeah. So we've been trying to put this on for for probably almost two years, dude. I was gonna say we're finally doing it now. I, I'm excited. I know we had we had Hamish on at one time at like two in the morning to chit chat, which is a lot of fun. But uh, you've kind of taken uh, what you do best and made a whole nother awesome project, which is essentially your own project. How how do you balance the two before we start playing music from both? Oh, bro, I don't even think we do balance it. I think it's, it's the fact that like isotopes has kind of gone a little bit slower at the moment. Like everyone's so busy with stuff that like we're now just releasing music that we had recorded in like 2020. Um, so because everyone kind of slowed down, I was just like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to do like my own thing. And then it just kind of just kind of like kept bouncing and bouncing out. Like I've got like probably like another seven or eight songs ready to go, but I'm only just releasing them slowly. <laughs> do you, you have all the videos done too, or are you just doing them like one at a time? No. Nah, so I was planning to do like more videos and stuff. Like I had originally, like I was meant to shoot two more already. Um, but it's just so costly now, like trying to do everything on my own that I just can't afford to do it. So I've just kind of had to take a step back because life is just super, super expensive. I, it is expensive, but it sounds great. It looks great. I, there's a great response you're getting from fake. F but uh, why why write this song? What what is the song actually about? Man, in all honesty, it was just a bit of nonsense. Hey, like I actually I walked into the writing session and we were meant to work on another song because I was already working on an EP. And uh, my producer just like, all right, what are we doing today? I was like, two words, fake fuck. And he was just like. I don't get it. And I was like, I don't get it either, but let's just see what happens. And we wrote the song in like three hours. That's amazing. It's it's because yeah. it, it's it seems like I don't even really know how to explain it, but it seems like a seasoned pop punk hit record. And I feel like like was this the first one that you guys worked on? Or, no. or is, this is like the one that you felt was the strongest. Let's go with this first. No, so this wasn't even, yeah, this was the, uh, I think it was the fourth one that we wrote. Um, so the first one that I wrote is actually the next one that's going to come out. But yeah, same deal. Like I didn't even have this idea of being a solo artist. I was actually going in to do writing sessions for Isotopes because no one was doing anything. So I was like, okay, sweet. I'm just going to start writing my own music for the band. Um, just complete, no holds, like no holding back. It's just whatever I want to do. And then we ended up doing two writing sessions, which is for two tracks that aren't released yet. And my producer's just like, bro, this is like so far from isotopes that it's like borderline pop punk. And I'm like, well, funny you say that because I've wanted to do like a side project thing. Um, so yeah, we kind of had like this idea that it was just like, you know what, we'll have the um, possibility that there'll be isotopes tracks, but we'll look at it from like a solo artist perspective. And it wasn't until we wrote this song that we were just like, yeah, nah, it's a solo project. Like you have to think of a name, you have to redo your whole branding and all this stuff. So I actually, I think I wrote this song in like September of last year and it wasn't released obviously until April, but we shot the music video in December. It was like the whole rebranding from like December to January. And yeah, ever since then, it's just been like, everything has been happening like behind the scenes. I've been spending all this money on doing stuff and just kind of isotopes has taken like a little back seat to everything that I'm doing now, which everyone's been really supportive of, but it's kind of gotten to the point where they're all like, well, what are we doing now? Are we playing shows? And I'm just like, well, I can't really fucking afford to do everything like at the one kind of like at the one time. So I'm just seeing how much I can push this, really out there and then kind of still do isotopes on the side which is why we released the track yesterday and 
we've still got some music to release in the next couple of months and stuff too. So wait, wait, wait. Isotopes dropped a song yesterday? Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I did not. We're playing it soon. But first, let's let let's <laughs> check out this fake f right here and see what we're talking about. Give your Hell yeah, and I see Hamish right there in his, in his cowboy. Oh, cowboy season's probably over after week one. Damn, son. Don't tell him that, Damn. but uh, <laughs> I gotta throw it in real quick. But dude, who who uh, who directed the videos? Because the videos came out like really cool. Oh, uh, so I came up with all the uh, all the concept and everything like that. This is actually in the back of my house. You have so just I, a half pipe just in the back of the house right there? Yeah, so as soon as lockdown hit, um we were actually looking to go skating because it had like the like everything had just opened up again um and then that same day they announced another lockdown like another shutdown and i was just like fuck i just i really want to skate so me and two of my housemates were just like fuck it let's just drive to the hardware store and build a half pipe like how hard can it be like yeah it took us it took us like four days to build that is and, awesome um, we, we've never done one before and we were just like you know what i was like you know what yeah, it's sweet i got all the tools in the car I just looked up like one YouTube tutorial and I was like, yeah, I got it. We're sweet. No, we got like, it. no measurement. Whatever. Yeah. We just winged it. <laughs> we got and, it. Um, yeah. So like, it's still in the backyard at the moment, but that is awesome. It, never, it doesn't really, it doesn't get used as much. My, uh, my special co-host today is a uh, JB Joseph Barba. He goes by JB music six, six, one JB. Can, do you have any questions for, for Justin? Yeah, so the separation has it been an easy transition? I mean, I know you're you're part of the the band still, but like doing your own m music and such, has that uh, caused any issues for you, or has it just been more supportive? Um, it hasn't necessarily caused any issues because, as I said, like I think everyone got so used to lockdown that they're all in like a little comfort zone of being like at home and not touring and all that kind of stuff, which is to me is very understandable. Like everyone needs a social life outside of music. Um, but for like someone like myself, where my my mind just runs like a hundred mile an hour, if I'm not doing something, I think I go crazy. Like I have to do something. I always have to be doing something like musically. I'm always writing or anything like that. Um, so for me, it was kind of like, if nothing's happening, I need to make something happen. Um, and if I'm constantly waiting on everyone else, it's just gonna, in a way kind of like upset me or kind of like put me in that same down downward slope that I've always kind of been in with isotopes, which is why we always do like emotional songs of like stuff that you're kind of going through in that. So it was kind of good to kind of break that cycle and just be more kind of like generally happy and have like most of my personality come out in these songs where it's just like, it's, it's just kind of like a big piss around in a way, but it's still got like that vibe that you can kind of like, groove to and stuff definitely so definitely. you're you're heavily inked up like myself but i feel like you got me beat uh overall how were the palms bro dude these were the worst i've heard the that absolute, it's terrible i've heard yeah, it's terrible it the absolute worst like i think um when i got this one done specifically um i was meant to do a whole session on my leg and i i flew up to the gold coast and the night before, a friend of mine was just like, hey, we'll go out for a couple of drinks. Um, and I was like, yeah, sweet. I only want a couple because I've got like a, a whole day tattoo session tomorrow. Um, I don't think I stopped drinking tequila and absinthe that whole <laughs> night. I just, I was, fucking, <laughs> I was so trashed, man. And I, I rocked up to my tattoo session and my mate's just like, yeah, you're not getting tattooed today, are you? And I was like, nah, man, I, I paid a deposit. I want to get my deposits worth. <laughs> So he's like, what do you want? I was like, I don't know. Just throw something on the palm, man. And dude, it was the worst pain. I was in like complete What does it agony. mean? What does that one mean right there that you're, hold, you're holding House up? House Hurricane, bro. You know the... What'd you say? What is it called? Remember House vs. Hurricane? Oh, House vs. Hurricane? Yeah, dude. They were like they were like the metalcore, like techno kind of band. Yeah, it's their, it's their symbol. It's the Crooked Teeth. Oh, okay. I did not... Yeah. I haven't heard that that name, that band name in years. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Man, I love that album. So I was like, you know what? I'll just get that. Like, why not? We'll have to play that uh, later after this interview so everybody knows who we're talking about. But uh, J Justin, I do want to do some trivia with you. I know you uh, were kind of throwing the curveball with the hot sauce. It's not required by any means, but you are allowed to pick the trivia. I need to know any movie or TV show that you've seen more than anything else. Doesn't have to be your favorite. You've just seen this movie or TV show and it's easier if you pick a movie because there's a lot of episodes of TV shows. There's a hint. Yeah, but uh, if if I can stump you, then uh, 
Well, I'll still do the hot sauce regardless because you're not required to do it. But if you do get it, we give you a wheel spin and I'll still do the hot sauce. What movie? Yeah, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you about a minute to, to think about it. Movie or TV show. And we're going to play Not Acting Right. <laughs> have you have you picked a a movie or TV show, sir? I'm trying to think, man. I was like, oh, I'd go with the uh, standard Pineapple Express since it was like something that I watched for ages. But I'm not going to pick it. Oh, okay. Because okay. I know that you're. Just... Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably go with Point Break. The new one or the old one? The Keanu one? Oh man, it has to be the the Swayze one. You can't you can't replace Swayze. That's true. Okay, give me a second to look that up. And uh, we'll see if we can stump you. Gotcha, here we go, here we go, here we go! Point break! Point break. Oh, my stream decks, there it goes. In point break, Gary Busey is in the film. That actor looks just like this. You see him on the screen. What is Gary Busey's character's name in the movie? He first. I movie, when, I can't even remember. I'll, I'll give you a hint. When he first meets Johnny, he says to him, "His last name, then his first name, then his last name again." Almost like James Bond style, like Bond, James Bond. But he says his name that way. Yeah, I don't even think I've seen the movie in like two years now. I think that's a stump. Yeah, it is a stump. <laughs> that is a stump. <laughs> Had you gotten it correct, we would have spun this wheel right here. You're the star of the day, so you don't have to do the hot sauce unless you'd like to, but I'm going to go ahead and do some ghost pepper Death Valley hot sauce. And then I get to wash it down. Thank God. With a shot. Now, I remember when I when I talked to Hamish, uh, he said, he said, oh, Millsy, Millsy. He kept saying Millsy. Yeah. What does that nickname mean and how did that come about? Man, it just came when I was in year 10. So my last name's Miller. Mm -hmm. So it just, it just came from that. It started off as Mills. And then over time, just during the 10th grade, one of my best mates just kept saying Millsy, Millsy. And then ever since then, it just kind of stuck. Um, yeah, and in, in a way, it was just kind of like having like your alter ego where I didn't like being called Justin, okay. even though it's my name. I, I prefer it now, but like either way, it doesn't really matter if it's Justin or if it's Millsy. Most of my close mates only know me as Millsy, and then everyone else is just Justin. Gotcha. I, I'm kind of the same way. Like, obviously, I wasn't born named BG, but I kind of don't really like my hey, first. Your name's not BG. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't like. I don't really like my first name either. So I totally get why you're saying that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do a shot right now. Uh, we haven't played your your third track, and I'm gonna throw up one more question to see if we can get you uh, at least on the board. With now, is this the same studio that you record everything in? Uh, no, no, this was just a random studio that was, um, that looks sick. So I just hide it for the day. Hell yeah. Sometimes I wish I was smart. I wish I made cures for how people What was the first are. tattoo you got? I wish I had power. Oh, I got nautical stars. Nautical stars? I, yeah, I got one. One and two. It was, like two. I, it was like I was jumping on the bandwagon when I was 18 and I made up some, I remember I made up some like bullshit excuse for like getting them. And I was like, yeah, it has like super meaning or whatever, but it was really just the trend when I was like 18. Like, you, And you have to have two. You can't just have one. You have to have two for balance reasons. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Totally. If, have you, is there a style of music that you also want to do besides pop punk and besides metal chord that you just haven't gotten to yet? I really wanted to do um, emo blues and just like have like really, really stripped down music. But I've been diving into, um, not to like kind of give every, anything away, but with like my solo project, I've kind of been diving more and more into like the rap kind of side of things. But it's like, um, like kind of like trap metal rap. Okay. But with like, yeah. with like pop punk twist. So it's very like Black Bear kind of Ian Dior um, and sort of like that MGK stuff that's kind of like trending right now. Um, but I'm just trying to put my own feel of it into it, like my own flow. So it's not really like I'm jumping on the bandwagon. It's kind of still bringing like that pop punk, but like emo slash metalcore into it. I gotcha. 
JB, JB, throw out one more question while I look up uh, something else that's going to stump Justin real quick. <laughs> Let's see. Um, <clears throat> do you have any uh, people with your solo project, any people that you want to, to reach out to feature on your tracks or try to get 100%. yourself on a feature? Yeah, right, 100%. Is that a secret? <laughs> um, it's not necessarily a secret. Um, I think I really, I really want to get Lil Lotus on a track. Really? Um, he, yeah, bro. He's popping off at the moment. And I love, like his latest album, um, was kind of like, uh, some, some inspiration in towards the stuff that I'm doing as well. Cause he's obviously doing like two projects where he's in like a metalcore kind of band or like a, and a pop punk band. So I was like, you know what? Like if I can kind of get like a collab with him, it would be really cool. Um, and then I was actually speaking to Call Me Charisma the other day. So he's potentially going to jump on one. But I mean, the options are open. Like, Have you already talked with Lotus? I know somebody no, I that knows Travis, uh, oh, Travis Richter. So we might be able to somewhat help very yeah, minutely. See. But if possible, I'll see what I can do to try to at least connect you guys. Uh, yeah, that'd be mad. Hell yeah, that, that would be uh, fantastic I, I really want to collab. Some features, but the other thing is too, as I really want to work with some other producers that are like outside of Australia. Like I even had a, a chat with Matty Malpass. Is it Malpass or Malpass? Um, so he's keen to work on something. He just said, you know, like set it up with my manager and then we'll kind of like work out a date where I can come to Australia. But I'd prefer to probably go to LA. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, come over here to California and get down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, baby. All right, here we go. I'm going to stump you again. I just know it. <laughs> In point break. Now, you, you, you said Patrick Swayze. Now, you know they all wear the bank robber president masks. What yeah. president was Patrick Swayze? Oh, man. I have the sticker on my fridge and everything, too, that I don't know the name. But you know what which president he looked like? Yeah, but I can't think of the name. I know what it looks like, but I don't know the name of it. I think that's another stump. Yeah. <laughs> it is Ronald Reagan. Now, he probably wouldn't know that because he's in Australia. He doesn't know American presidents. Just like I can't name all the Australian presidents or leaders and whatnot. Billsy, do you consume cannabis? If so, indica, hybrid, sativa, what's your preference? I don't actually smoke at all. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Or not, depending on how you look at it, but it's a weed show. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, mean, I, dabbled, I dabbled in it when I was like 18 and stuff, but it just wasn't for me. No worries. It's all good. Yeah. Um, what are you what are you allowed to tell us that you have coming out the rest of uh, the rest of the year? Um JB, can, JB, can you mute your mic? Can you mute your mic? I'm sorry. I thought it was. We just heard. I was like, "Is that me?" I was like, oh. <laughs> "He's like, oh, it's good um, reason to get down." So I should be dropping another solo track in the next month or so. I'm just finalizing the um, the music video, but the music video is going to be very, very different to any other music video that I've ever done, and it it's completely different to anything that Isotopes has done as well. I can't give away exactly what it is, but yeah, it, it's expected that it's going to be something very, very left field. Cool. Um, Isotopes is going to drop another track probably next month as well. Um, and then I've just got to send away the mixes to get mastered on another two that we have for Isotopes. So they'll probably drop very, very early next year as well. I'm known for curveballs, and I'm going to throw in another one at you right now. If you come to L.A., Let's just say hypothetically it's planned way in advance. We're talking like February, April, something of next year, blah, blah, blah. Is it possible that I could help arrange you playing at like a venue in LA also and, and we get a Justin Miller set or does that require all of the backing band? It's, it, it's impossible to do like a solo show of some kind. Yeah, I'd have to get a band sorted. I figured. Just throwing it. I'm yeah. trying. I'm just I have, I'm trying. I have like members and stuff. We just haven't actually gotten to anything uh, physical just yet. I've kind of just been like on the back burner with it all because I'm trying to move house by the end of the year. So I'm like pushing it to the start of next year and kind of getting everyone together. I actually got like my first little um, 
guitar session happening on Monday next week with one of the guitarists. And then my drum has just been kind of like practicing stuff. But my producer who's in the music videos and that, he's like, you know, if there's any shows or tours and stuff, he goes, if I'm available, I'd be more than happy to jump on them. And um, yeah, even like, do you remember Behind Crimson Eyes? That does not sound familiar, no. Behind Crimson Eyes, they were like a big, big, um, like emo band from Mel. I'm pretty sure they're from Melbourne or they're from Brisbane. Um, from like 2006 remember like the taste of chaos days and yeah like when channel v was massive i went to a couple of taste of chaos but so they played it but they played the australian one not the american i one. think so but they were huge back in the day like i remember jamming them when i was like 16 um on like my p plates and stuff and funnily enough their drummer actually messaged me the other day and was just like yo have you got a band or you're just using session musicians and mind you this same drummer was doing like massive um kind of like drum fucking shows with like the drummer from Parkway Drive and like lifting up on like fire fire stages and all this kind of stuff and I was wow. like yo this guy wants the drum for me wow <laughs> that guy he's upside yeah. down but I just know he wants the drum for me yeah so I was like oh okay that's sick so yeah there's a lot of things that are p good potentials and stuff but I'm just trying to um yeah as like I've had like big show offerings and stuff that I've turned down and um, I'm just like, you know what, I want to have like a catalog of music out there before I just start jumping on shows and just kind of like earn my right to play a show and have people know like a number of songs, not just be like, oh, yo, just play Fake Fuck. Like, you know what I mean? I want them to be able to sing to like a, a handful of songs. I get it. I yeah. get it. But I got, a guy's got to try. A guy's got to try to, you know, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. in I'm LA, sure. I mean, catch the set. If you're here, I'm trying. Tell me about I Don't Feel Anything Now. Oh man, this was like, so we wrote this in 2019. It was like just before COVID had hit and we were actually meant to go in the studio right before COVID and went right before we were meant to go on like all these international tours uh, in 2020 with Isotopes. So it's just been like a very, very slow delay with releasing because of COVID. No one, no one being sure of what they want to do. And then obviously me starting this new project um, but yeah, this one was just about a toxic relationship from probably like 2017. It was kind of like a, a, a follow up to writing nightmare. And it was just about this relationship that I had. And it's kind of just like burying and burning the past. Like it talks about like, um, burning all of your old pictures and all that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of saying goodbye to like a, a really bad memory. Let's check it out. Hell yeah, I mean, it's fire. I, I see how it kind of has like a little bit of that pop punk influence, but at the same time, it's it's different than your solo stuff for sure. Yeah. Well, all this stuff as well, this was all written prior to my solo stuff, but it's obviously just getting released after it. So it, in a way, it was kind of meant to push into this new kind of era. But now that it's coming out afterwards, everyone's probably thinking like, oh man, they're just going like more pop punk now because he's already doing pop punk. And like he's rapping now because he's rapping and he's solo stuff. But I'm like, I already wrote all this shit way before I started this project. It was meant to be developing you into the way that I'm kind of taking my music. Mm -hmm. But it I, is what it is. You can't, you can't win it all. I get it. Uh, we only have time for about maybe one or two more questions, JB. What is your final question for, for Justin? And then I got one final question and we'll let you go, sir. <laughs> so you mentioned a couple artists earlier about uh, set influence with your music and such. Uh, do you have any other favorites uh, that are like mainstreaming at the moment? Um, I mean, MGK would be sick. Uh, I've actually been like really, really fucking with Ian Dior and... Um, 44 Phantom? Have you heard of him? Phantom, that's the no. one that that's the one that also has a song oh. with MGK, but it's like kind of like Black Bearish. Yeah, yeah. So oh. I've, I've actually known about 44 Phantom for like the last year or the last year and a half. I just kind of went on this dive into all these artists that when you look up artists on Spotify and they're like, oh, you might also like this artist. So I actually discovered him about a year ago and he has this track called Freak, which is just a mad fucking groove. Um, but obviously now only he's getting more recognition because he's doing that song with MGK and I'm like, man, yeah. you've missed out on like the last couple of years when he's been really peaking. But yeah, so he, he'd be someone that I'd really like to get on a track because he just has like this 
dynamic voice about himself as well. Yeah, he's cool. We, I mean, I only heard of him because of the song that that you mentioned with MGK, which is like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, my final question for you, sir, uh, is is a serious one. I ask everybody that we have in this show uh, this final same question. First of all, I appreciate you doing this, by the way, and I hope we chat soon. I know this is totally not related, but I don't know if you recall, but a while ago I was like, if I ever come to Australia, which is on my list, one of my goals is to get a tattoo with you, sir. I don't know. Yeah, if, hell yeah. So let's let's set that up. But uh, my final question is can you can you tell us a piece of musical advice that somebody in the industry has given you that kind of changed things or made you take your career more seriously or an absolute disaster of a mistake you made early on in your music career that you don't want any starting up artist or band to make i can give an answer to both because one especially like in this in the beginning of like isotopes um one of the biggest things that I used to do because I was just so self-conscious about performing was I would always get drunk before a show or I would always have to get drunk in order to kind of have that confidence in order to perform well which you would think that it would be doing you really good because you just like you in this new state where you're just like oh I feel good I feel great like I'm drunk I'm playing a show and then we started filming shows and I would watch them back and I was like man I sound like shit like I'm in this state of mind where I'm just drinking to give myself confidence and think that I'm performing well. And when I look back at it, I was like, man, that was fucking horrible. Like I'm embarrassed of even playing that show. So it kind of turned a leaf where I didn't drink ever before shows. And like, I still don't drink before shows. I'll probably have like one or two beers and I won't actually drink until we've done playing until we're finished. And I can actually guarantee and be like, okay, I played a good show. It was a good time and now I can kind of like celebrate that we've actually performed um, that. And then the biggest bit of advice that I've been given from someone is kill them with kindness. Like treat everyone as if you uh, like treat them how you want to be treated and treat everyone equally that you can basically just walk away and be like, you know what? They can't say anything bad about me because I treated them as if I was that person. You know what I mean? So they're going to treat me the same way and just kind of give everyone like that same respect in the, in the industry. I love that. Be cool, be cool to people. And hopefully they're cool back to you and everyone gets along and, and is happy, go lucky and make sure you kill the set. So afterwards you can reflect and, and say, I f killed that. Now I can, yeah. now I can party. <laughs> I won't go into de I won't go into depth of how drunk I was when I played that show and like a uh, yeah but like I basically woke up the next morning with like what I felt like a, a broken ankle like I I'm pretty sure I like twisted my ankle and I told everyone in the band and they were just like yeah well you probably fucking deserve it <laughs> and I was like oh no what did I do last night and then yeah basically everyone in the band huddled me in for like a conversation and they were just like you said this this is what you did and I was just like oh my god I was really drunk so i've had i've had a sloppy show or two in my day too but uh i appreciate you doing this man this is a lot of fun it was almost two years in the making hopefully we can do it again sometime down the road but uh yeah, Lizzie, I you, justin i appreciate you man i love just about everything you do musically don't ever change you're awesome brother i hopefully i can make it out to australia soon so we could party a little bit but uh other Definitely. than that have yourself a fantastic day sir and uh don't be a stranger please thanks so much guys i appreciate it Cheers. Cheers. Justin Miller, a.k.a. the singer of Ice and Tubson. Have a great day. Thank you, brother. For real.